Thank you so much, Margaret. Yeah, it's Margaret, really thank you for everything. It's a real pleasure. <laughs> okay. So we worked really hard on this program, I gotta tell you that. The tune because we can. That's right. <laughs> So good evening, everyone, and welcome to the melting pot of early American music. I'm Mary Lou Ferrante. And I'm Robin O'Haran. I'm going to take off my headphones, so I'm not going to hear you if you talk. But It'll be very helpful to have those on. Okay. I know, but <laughs> we'll need to see it if someone, we'll need to hear it if someone oh. wants to come in. Okay, and we, uh... You're going to start with, we're going to take you? Oh, well, we're going to take you on a journey through the centuries. Into the mountains and the dusty back roads of America. And here we go. song that dates back before the Civil War. It probably came over here, uh, like most songs came over here from the British Isles. And it was played on a particular open back, what they call a mountain banjo today, but um, and claw hammer style, where you use a claw and strum down with your finger. And um, this is a diddly bow. It's um, we're going to.
going to do a diddly bow tune. It, it, uh, oh, well, the dulcimer, let me just tell you a little bit about the dulcimer. So the mountain dulcimers, um, they, uh, they're true American instruments that were uh, created in the Appalachian Mountains of West Virginia. And um, they have a beautiful sound. They have a modal, modal scale. And they used to be called uh, hog fiddles. And they started out with just a piece of hog gut nailed to the side of a barn. And they'd hammer, play it with a stick. And, uh, and then when they became lap dulcimers, they played them with a stick and a feather, which I used to do, but my cat ate all the feathers. <laughs> and diddly bow is a similar instrument uh, in terms of you pl it was played with a stick. And we'll tell you more about it after this tune. We're going to do a diddly bow tune. Spoonful of coffee, might be a spoonful of tea. Just a little spoon of your precious love, good enough for me. People lie about that, cry about that, they're dying about that. Everybody's talking about that spoonful. Spoonful of sugar or honey from the honey bee, but just a little taste of your precious love. That is um, the song is spoonful and Mary Lou is playing the spoons. Yeah, I think that's. <laughs> S 
so wooden good. spoons, wooden but spoons, but still. Yeah, I gotta put this down. And um, so the doodly bow derived from uh, West African. You could just sit it anywhere. Instruments that were brought over uh, to America. They were a children's instrument, and they were played with uh, one string and sticks, changing the pitch by sliding up and down. Um, they became really popular in the Delta region of the South, and they had a huge influence on the blues sound that followed. They were also called jitterbugs, one string, the musicologist name for it was... Um, Monochord zip -up. Yeah, you're part of you. Here's the doodly bow. I can't hear you. Do you have your card on you? Um, no. <laughs> oh, I can hear you guys talking um, now. Can you grab the card and go find the bag? Video or some other thing stepping on this. Let's see if I can find it. That's it. You got yeah, it. I know. So, Gay Roberts, if you're listening, you need to stay muted because you have uh, something going on Some in the kind background of a show going that's on. going over our show. You don't have to be here if you don't want to, but you do <laughs> have to be quiet. <laughs> yes, please. Okay, sorry. Um, we are pinned for everybody. So I'm not sure, and you might want to go to view and put uh, speaker view because we are pinned and you, we should be the ones that you see. So if there's a, I'll come up and check again. And here comes uh, someone else joining and there's someone in the waiting room. Okay, welcome. We just did our first two songs. Welcome. Glad you could make it. And um, all right, we're going to continue on, OK? All right, we're, you got to tell them about it. Yeah, um, so while the diddly bow is a very old instrument, the song we just played is a more modern blues tune by a man named Willie Dixon. Howling Wolf actually added the verse about the silver and gold, but uh, Chicago bluesman Willie Dixon is widely regarded as one of the most influential figures in the development of classic urban blues. In a career spanning six decades, he gained renown for his prolific work as a bassist, guitarist, singer, songwriter, arranger, music rights activist, and producer. And again, um, if you're going to have any kind of background noise, please mute yourself. This is a recorded performance, and we don't want to detract from that for anybody. So um, we're moving forward in time to calls and hollers. And these were, again, developed from West African culture in the United States. In West Africa, music was used for everything. It was used for planting, sowing seeds, harvesting, blacksmiths, calling people home for dinner. And um, when, when West Africans were brought to this country against their will, they brought their music with them. And, and they would sing in the fields, and they would call back and forth, call and response, and that's how they communicated. And then uh, during the time of the Underground Railroad, these calls and hollers became code for how to get to Canada, which was also called the Promised Land or Heaven. That was the code words for Canada. So um, anyway, we are going to now... Um, I, you should stay muted, but this is a call and response song. So if you are feeling brave enough and you want to, we're doing a song called Sheep Sheep. And the response is always the same. It's just, yes, Lord, I know the way. And you're welcome to uh, join in. Um, you could try unmuting, but, but if you want to sing muted, it's okay. Best to probably sing. 
seeing muted. Best if you're probably seeing muted because there is some delay. There is a delay with, for with, sure. Uh, and even though we're on Ethernet and hopefully we don't have the delay, but we don't know what kind of delay you might have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Sheep, sheep, do you know the way? Yes, Lord, I know the way. I said, sheep, 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 do you know the way? Yes, Lord, I know the way. Do you know the way by the clapping of your hands? Yes, Lord, I know the way. Do you know the way by the stomping of your feet? Yes, Lord, I know the way. I said, sheep, sheep, do you know the way? Yes, Lord, I know the way. I said, sheep. Sheep, sheep, do you know the way? Yes, Lord, I know the way. And do you know the way by the setting of the sun? Yes, Lord, I know the way. I said, do you know the way by the rising of the moon? Yes, Lord, I know the way. I said, sheep, sheep, do you know the way? Yes, Lord, I know the way. I said, sheep, 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 do you know the way? Yes, Lord, I know the way. Yeah. And that's how they got to Canada, by the rising of the moon and the setting of the sun. So, um, so many homes in New England had secret compartments to hide people on their way to Canada, the promised land. And the first show we held for this program just before COVID happened was in Millbury, Massachusetts at the Asa Waters mansion. Asa Waters III was a known abolitionist along with his daughter, Catherine. And you can tour the mansion. It has a hidden closet with a hidden, well, it has a closet with a hidden ladder, not a hidden closet, uh, that leads up to the second floor storage area. And there are beds that were used for the enslaved people who were running towards their freedom. And um, now we're moving into spirituals and gospel. And when West Africans, again, were exposed to Christianity, they uh, developed their own style for the hymns that they learned. And those songs became spirituals. Now, uh, the combination of spirituals and blues became gospel. And it was, uh, gospel music was developed by Thomas A. Dorsey. He was a uh, ragtime blues piano player known as um, Georgia Tom. And uh, he had an, a life-changing encounter with God. And he said, why should the devil have all the good music? And he created gospel <laughs> music. And uh, which is kind of why blues and gospel are flip sides of the same coin. I can't separate them, mm -hmm. really. But we're going to do a medley of um, spiritual gospel songs. We're going to do Wade in the Water, um, Sometimes I feel like a motherless child, and I want to die easy. And again, if you are feeling ambitious and you want to sing at home, we encourage you to join in. You know, someday we hope to do this, this show live in places again and get the whole audience singing. Uh, we love participation. And, um, you know, you, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. Okay. Why don't you wait in the water? Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes 
Thanks so much. That's fun. All right, moving into the mid 1800s, we are going to do a dulcimer duet. It's a song written in 1848 by um, Joseph Brackett Jr., who was a Shaker songwriter, and he was an elder in the Shaker. I don't know, religion or movement, whatever. But this is a, an American song that is, uh, it's so well known and it's, it's so beautiful. Um, I'm trying to think which dulcimer you want. <laughs> Sorry, my earphones are attached too. That's <laughs> Do you want them? No, I don't have to have them. So I've done online concerts, but this is the first one I did with more than just me. It so is a challenging. It's a bit of a challenge I must say. setting it up. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we did it. I we hope you're enjoying so it. Guys. Far we've so done far, it. so far, so good. So good. <laughs> this is um, simple gifts. Is it? Is a gift to be simple, is a gift to be free, is a gift to come around where we come to be. And when we find ourselves in a place that's just right, we'll be in the garden of Beautiful, Robin. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys feel free to clap even if we can't hear it. It's nice yeah, to yeah. see the hands. <laughs> we can see the hands. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For those who have their video. For those who have video on, yeah. right. Right. So um, the next song that we're calling upon was written by Stephen Foster. Um, and so he was a songwriter and a minstrel, a really well-known songwriter and a minstrel in American history. Um, and so minstrel music was actually popular music from the early 1800s, and it lasted for 100 years. Um, and so we're going, I'm going to need the routine. <laughs> So, so minstrels were kind of like um, wandering songwriters, like you know, it, they, in uh, in days when they had kings and courts, the wandering minstrels were how people got their news, and they would write songs about all the stuff that was happening. And of course, if the king paid them, they'd write 
wonderful songs about the king. Um, but but uh, Stephen Foster's songs are timeless. And this particular song, um, Hard Times Come No More, it was written, um, it was written during a time, it was written, I think, in 1859. It's hard to believe that, 1859, in a, in a time of uh, intense racial turmoil, which hasn't changed all that much. And um, it's, cause, it's called Hard Times Come No More. I just, I love this song. Can you let that person in? Sorry, we had to put the computer so far away and I don't have a way to, like I don't have a thing where I could just click. Okay, that's good. They're here. Everyone else is in there. All right, thanks. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hi, Phil. pause in life's pleasures and count its many tears while we all sub sorrow from with the poor there's a song that will linger forever in our fears Is a sigh that is wafted across the troubled way. Tis a wail heard from the distant shore. Tis a dirge that is murmured around the lowly grave.
you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do another Stephen Foster yes, song. Yes, another Stephen Foster song. And um, this particular song is among the most popular American songs ever written. And it still is. I mean, it's yes. not even in past tense or no. Mm. One thing about the banjo, when you retune one string, you have to retune them all. It's true of a lot of stringed yeah. instruments. But especially when the bridge is just kind of hanging out on it. So how are you guys doing out there? Good? Thumbs up? Nice, nice. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thanks. So glad to hear that. We're so grateful that we get to do this. Yes. And again, I want to thank the Southbridge Cultural Council for making this possible yes, and their patience absolutely. and flexibility. Yes. <laughs> so.
for his wife, June Carter, who was part of the Carter family, which brings us to our next topic. Um, the Carter family actually consisted of A.P. Carter and his wife, Sarah, and her cousin, Mabel. And they were an American folk music group who recorded over 300 songs. A.P. would actually walk from homestead to homestead, which was a long way in those days, uh, collecting songs and bringing them back to Sarah and Maybell to work on. And they recorded between 1927 and 1956. So we're going to do this song as a dulcimer duet. Um, it's Wildwood Flower. It's a song that every uh, fingerstyle guitar picker learns to play. Um, it's really fun on dulcimer. And um, it was originally a poem. It was written as a poem called I'll Twine Mid the Ringlets by J.P. Webster and Maud Irving. And the Carter family turned it into this just beautiful, timeless melody and song. to uh, the 20s and a little bit of blues, but we're going to start that with, uh, with a tune that um, it actually started life as a spiritual, and of course we know blues and spirituals are Intertwined. kissing cousins. <laughs> <laughs> the 60s, Congress declared this the declared Burl Ives version of this song the, the folk song of the century. And um, it's been done in every genre. Uh, folk, blues, jazz, spirituals, and um, our version kind of leans towards blues, but I don't know what you'd call it. There go all my papers. Okay, Wayfaring Stranger. Thank you. 
important part uh, in the development of blues was the invention of resonator and uh, lap steel and dobro guitars. Um, and uh, they are a true American instrument that was invented in the 20s. And a, um, a luthier and a Hawaiian slack key lap steel guitar player uh, collaborated and came up. They were on a quest for a loud guitar. And because no one could hear the guitar in bands, you know, they had the piano and they had the stand-up bass and they had the horn section and the guitar players would be furiously playing it and it looked like they were mimes. So uh, the first ones were all made out of metal this round part of my guitar, that was made out of, um, oh, what do you call it? It's a car part. Hubcaps. Hubcaps. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I uh, wrote a little Hawaiian slack key tune to demonstrate that beautiful form of fingerstyle guitar playing. And then I eventually added words to it. It's called Aloha Baby.
So um, the Hawaiian lap steel guitar was actually invented by a young man in his high school dormitory in Hawaii. His name was Joseph Kukuku, and um, he went on to becoming a world touring guitar soloist. And as you can see, the guitar is played on your lap um, with a steel bar. Square neck. Square Strings neck, are really yeah. high up. <laughs> and the story is that he went and found this particular steel bar uh, at a railroad on a railroad crossing and That's brought it home to his dorm. Whether that really happened or not, it's a pretty good story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the first bottlenecks were literally beer bottlenecks. Well, maybe wine bottles, but mostly beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, they even use knives, and too, They use right? knives. They use anything steel. Yeah. 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 Uh, I used to use a socket wrench to play a slide. They were really heavy. So um, we are going to, we're going to do, are we going to do, um, what's the matter with the milk? Uh, the next song is or are we gonna do Sweet, Sweet Love, Love and Soul. And Old Soul? Yeah. Okay. So this next song was um, uh, a traditional song. It's actually a traditional song, so there's not really a, a known writer, but a woman named Sarah Martin, who was a classic blues singer and very popular in her time in the 20s, um, recorded this in 1924 with her jug band for OK Records. And uh, Maria Maldar just recorded a new version of it with Skinny tu Tuba. Skinny Tuba, I think, is a, this Tuba Skinny. Tuba skinny. Tuba skinny. <laughs> Tuba is skinny. Right. <laughs> he just slimmed down a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
tunes for you guys and I just want to thank you again for for uh, coming out to hang out with us tonight and I know there's lots of things competing for your time and we're in grateful. person things and now. In, now in person things so we're really grateful you're here yeah um, this is also this song has a call and response in it or do you want to you want to tell a little bit about this song Ari? Gus Cannon and the Joke Stompers oh do you want to tell that now? Are we going to do the Memphis Moon tune now? Oh, right. Or First Memphis Moon. Okay. All right. First Memphis Moon. I know we're running a little late. Is that okay? Well, we started we, a little late. We did start we're a just, little late. We're just, okay. we're right on time. Because we were waiting for people. Yeah. So this song was actually written by no other than the queen of country blues, Memphis Minnie, and her husband at the time, <laughs> Kansas City Joe McCoy. She had how many husbands? Uh, well, Four? it's kind of um, it was a, a discrepancy. Situation. There's definitely <laughs> two, maybe three. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a call and response song. So please sing along. Uh, when I sing, or when we sing, what's the matter with the mill? You're going to sing. Done broke down. All right. <laughs>
is it in your Bradford Shaw? All right, this is also a really fun tune. So this next song was written by a man named Gus Tannen, and he recorded this with his Jug Stompers. And so basically a jug band was just a band that couldn't really, a bunch of folks who couldn't really afford uh, particular instruments. And Gus Cannon, known also as Banjo Joe, made his first banjo out of a frying pan. So um, they did what they that. could. <laughs> just got to tune up. Are we in the right tune? Yeah. <laughs> And thank you all again so much. This um, song is called Walk Right In, and please sing along. Yeah, and thank you to the um, Jacob Edwards Library yes. and the Southbridge Cultural Council and each and every one of you for making our night so special. Thank and the you. Massachusetts Cultural Council. And the Massachusetts Cultural yes. Council. We are very grateful. Very grateful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs>
fun? That was really fun. I hope you had a I hope you enjoyed this journey through Americana. And um, actually if if uh, I don't know if we have enough time, but if anyone has a quick question that they want to ask or a comment, uh, we probably have like a couple minutes. Margaret might want to say something. Or Margaret, if you want to say something now. You're still there. Uh, just to thank you both for a wonderful evening's entertainment. This was really fun and so informative. It's okay. really interesting to hear about the musical heritage that uh, is Americana and where we are today. So thank you. I found it very inspiring. Oh, that's great. That's great. And thanks again to the Cultural Council. Yes, and thank you for the Cultural Council. And we'll send you a link to the performance too, because we're recording. Oh, that'd be great. We'll put it on our YouTube playlist. Oh, good. Perfect. Okay. And thank, thank you all for coming out. Thank Hi. you. Can I ask a Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, yes. Could you show me the diddly bow? Where is the diddly bow? Here it is. Whoa. This I is actually, a com I actually built this diddly bow. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a cigar box. It has a pickup in it. I can plug, I could plug this diddly bow in. And, wow. Um, I used uh, bling for <laughs> to mark the frets uh -huh. <laughs> that I got at Walmart. And it's cool. a mystery thing. I used a uh, big screw for the uh, net here, regular tuning. So you, you made the whole thing? I, yes, I did. I wow. Did. And I actually, oh. I taught a couple of classes on building diddly bows. <laughs> amazing. Really hey, both, the, both of you were amazing. Uh, Not only the instruments, but the breadth of, it, it, of, of knowledge about music. It was we, great. We love the history. We're really yeah. passionate about American yeah. music and the history. And it, we had so much fun collaborating on this program. Oh, it was so. great. Well, of course, I love the blues the most. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I know. The blues are Wonderful. Really Thank you. Yeah. So thanks again. And thanks, everyone, for coming. Hope to see you at a live gig soon. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Be <laughs> okay. safe. Yeah, you too. Bye. 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 Bye.